Hello, welcome to the Minimalist EDC. My name is Chris, and today is another new knife day. And so if you watch a couple of videos on my channel, you may have uh, got the impression that I don't uh, uh, typically do a lot of content with budget knives. And it's true, I don't, I really don't. Um, I only have a couple uh, what you might consider traditional budget knives in my collection, but uh, I was watching another YouTuber's review of this guy right here, and it caught my attention. So I wanted to give it a try out and, because it um, had a few features on it that you don't typically see in that field. So uh, let's get to it. This is, honestly on the package, we got Kubi Royal KU321 Gentleman Omen Tan Bead Bull. Yep, that's descriptive. All right, so what we have here is... Just hanging out in the box, huh? All right. Um, we have the the Kubi 321. And so this guy caught my attention for a few reasons. And um, I, 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 the force and foremost is the front flipper on a budget knife. There's a few out there, but it's typically not uh, a feature you see on budget knives very often. Uh, typically because budget knives, they want to have that mass appeal, right, to a audience that... Um, is maybe not as immersed in the knife world uh, so you see a lot of flippers and a lot of uh, thumb studs but the front flipper along with no thumb studs and the, the opening hole um, caught my attention so um, I picked one up uh, on Amazon and I uh, thought we'd give it a go so let's see what we got right out of the box I'm gonna try this this uh, the action on the reverse flick oh not too bad um, let's see the detent so for a front flipper, you typically want a lighter detent because you have just the force required to do the front flip. doesn't require as much um, detent force as a successful thumb opening or a uh, reverse flick. Oh, there we go. Um, so this detent is tuned a little tight. Maybe we can look at that at, at some point. Um, but the, the front flip works just great. Uh, the the full the fuller hole uh, I think looks good I, I like the uh, I like the overall design here so um, before we get started let's just do the old ritual just a little size check this is against the uh, crisp American two dollar bill and then the other two budget knives that I kind of have laying around my Elementum which was kind of my gateway knife that got me into the knife hobby and then we have a QSP penguin so these are all kind of in that budget world so you see that we're all, we're dealing with d2 folders we're dealing with um so we got a hollow grind on this guy a flat grind on these two so that's kind of the world we're playing in um somewhere around 50 dollars. i think i paid about i think just over 60 for this guy so um what have we got out of the box we've got g10 handles so at a distance like the pictures on, I knew they were G10. I wasn't fooled by this, but on the uh, from a distance on the pictures they had on the website, you'd be um, fooled into thinking this looks for, like like a tan micarta because it is. Let's see if I can get it. It is textured like micarta. Like it looks like they took a micarta texture and, and embossed it onto this G10, which I kind of like. I like the I like the look at it, look of it. Um, just out of the box, uh, the, I, I, I like the handle shape. I like the color. Um, the, the pivot, it's a little garish with that, that giant KB. And as far as blade graffiti, uh, we got Kubi right here. And then on the back side, we've got, what was this? CM, CM designs, OM designs. It's hard to tell. CM, uh, CM designs and that little, you got D2 up there. I don't know if you can see this, like some gunk coming out of the pivot this and it just could be extra lube um i'm going to take a look at that here very shortly but i see i do see some gunk coming out of it and give it a um it has an odor to it and so i'm not going to knock the knife too much for that I, if it continues to have that odor i will uh um do something with it but it's it's got a very um petroleum type smell coming from it and it may just be you know it's just been on a you know, probably a month from China to get here on a boat, and so it could have picked up some smells from that. But as far as action goes, 
I'm impressed. So the liner lock, it is a liner lock. Uh, the liner lock is a little thick. Uh, as you can see, the access to the liner lock is good. This is, I, I actually like this design where the liner lock stands a little bit proud of the scales so that you can actually get your thumb in there and move it over. Uh, it is a bit thick. Uh, I would like to see the liner maybe 75% of what it is, but I'm not going to take knocks off for a budget knife for having thick liners. Uh, you probably, I can do, speaking of liners, let's, we'll take a look in there. You can see that there is some skeletonization. So they did uh, do a little work to keep the, the weight down on there, which I appreciate. Uh, we end up with a backspacer. Um, we have a couple holes in the in the scale. So this one right here, I mean, if you're going to have a lanyard hole, like this, it's kind of ugly, honestly. Um, I don't care for lanyards and I don't want them on my knives, but um, it is what it is. Uh, and then we have two screws that hold in the the clip. The clip has, it's really stiff. I mean, it's, it's your standard spring clip. You're going to see a very much, very similar to something that that's like on a Civivi here. Um, and then we've got a pivot screw. Okay, cool. So overall, first impressions. I like it. I like the I like the action. I like the snappiness of it. The blade itself seems to be sharp. Um, yeah, maybe I just got a bad angle on the first one. It's it's moving through cardboard. Uh, so it, it comes out of the bark sharp. It feels a little a little toothy. Uh, maybe a stropping could uh, give some improvement there, but no knocks there. Um, I like the blade shape. I like the fuller. I think that the, the, aesthetically the style is nice. I like having the ac action to uh, or the option to use it as a um, a spidey hole flipper and a top flipper and thumb thumb flipper. So multiple methods of deployment, phenomenal. Uh, let's see, the shake open. No, the detent is pretty strong on this guy. I don't. I wouldn't expect a shake open, and just a single barrel spacer to. Uh, to keep it apart so that's interesting um, overall uh, I think this is a very um, if you're into the the space uh, for a budget knife this is not a bad one um, from first glance looking at a few things so the jimping the jimping on top it stops really really close to the front flipper like it could it would not have hurt them to put two or three more jumps to cover the top of this guy so that the whole thing is got a texture to it so no matter where you put your thumb on this you could catch some jimping um the way i use front flippers like i'm it's not going to be a big deal because i'm putting pressure here and pushing through so it works but you they could have had one or two more jimpings on the top to be able to put your thumb on the top of it and pull over as well rather than pushing into the knife or is it so that's the first thing I see that doesn't particularly um, stand out as amazing but so I intended this to be just a um, unboxing first impressions but as I saw before they got some gunk coming out of the the pivot here so uh, if you want to hang around I'm going to uh, also tack on a disassembly and maintenance because we're going to take a look at what this thing looks on the inside and see what that gunk's all about so Gonna get our tools out. Uh, eyeballing it, I think we're dealing with a T8 on the pivot. That actually might be a T10. Goodness, let's see what we got. A T10, that'd be kind of impressive for a budget world. Yep, that is a T10. Very nice, Kubi. I appreciate the larger hardware. And so the first thing I see here, more of that resinous gunk. Like, you, you see this this ruddy red stuff that is coming off of the thing? Let's see if I can zoom in on that. That could be thread locker. I'm not sure. We will endeavor to continue to investigate. All right, so I got the pivot out. That was pretty easy. And then I think we're dealing with T6s on the rest of this guy. T6s.
so we got that off. All right, so interesting. The, the screws are not uh, interchangeable. One is deeper than the other. And you see right here we got a, a blue thread locker, which leads me to believe that red stuff is not a thread locker residue. All right. So getting this thing off, ugh, this is kind of gross. Um, it's, I mean, it's not bad by any means. Like, it's not going to hurt you or anything. But you can see, I think this is the lube they put it on this thing that has just gotten out of hand. Like, it, the, the petroleum smell that I smelled earlier, I think this is what the culprit is. Um, so we've got a nested liner lock, which is kind of cool. You see the milling here where the, the, the liner sits. And... If I miss my guess, yeah, this thing is just going to come out. I think. I'm actually going to see if I can disengage the pivot. Yep. Okay. And this thing sits on the barrel spacer and on this pin, which the pin is not attached to anything and is covered in this gunk. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to wash the hands after this one. All right, we got caged ball bearings, which is a good good sign, and we've got more of this uh, mystery goo. Can you see that? Like I said, I th I'm pretty sure this is just a overzealous greasing with probably not the best grease. So let's clean it off you can kind of see how easy it is to take this guy apart it wasn't a problem at all all I'm really gonna do is just use rubbing alcohol and a paper towel to get rid of some of this gunk it's it's thick and so I'm thinking once this, this goes away like the action wasn't bad and the, the detail that was a little strong uh, we're gonna see what it looks like afterwards because with a proper lubrication and without all this gunk in there hopefully we will get rid of the smell and improve the action I think I want bear with me shuffle around yeah q-tip to get in there the mill work on this thing is actually not bad at all like the they've milled out the or cammed out where the um, ball bearing sit and it's actually kind of cool I think that will do well for the longevity of this thing and the, the ball bearing staying where they're going to stay it's just I can tell that gunk is hardened a little bit and it's not the easiest thing to get out so again this is also why you know I don't deal with budget knives um, on the regular the QC is not where I expect it to be for a product that I'm buying and this is not bad like this is gonna take me five ten minutes to get where I want it but someone who is not versed in pocket knife maintenance may not ever get this far and so I want to keep that stop or that pin I guess that is a stop pin too huh multi-purpose pin um, clean the liners off. They appear to be stainless steel. Um, maybe not as stainless as they could be. I can already see a little bit of discoloration. It, I don't think it's rust, but it's not. They're not super shiny. This one seems to be all right. And th this is the milling I was talking about earlier. Not bad. Good weight reduction. And then we got all this grease that's in this liner right here, or the scale right here. Yeah, as I'm working on it, I think I'm I'm positive that's what I was smelling is whatever this grease is. And then we're going to get it out of the pivot hole. And while I'm doing this, I will again plead with you to like and subscribe. It helps me out tells the algorithm hey I like this channel maybe other people that like other channels would also like this channel that I subscribe to so you know if you're already subscribed to Metal Complex and Eve's Knives and 
Nick Shabazz and then you subscribe to me, then it tells the algorithm that other people that visit those channels might like my videos too. And that helps me out. I'm really only doing this for fun, but it's also nice to see the community grow and more interactions. All right, so this thing is kind of gross. Sorry, I don't know if I'm even doing that on camera. This this is the pivot, and there's all kinds of gross in there. Um, I'm gonna just clean that out. And lastly, yeah, using a lot of alcohol on this guy, but there's a lot of a lot of things to dissolve. All right, so the ball bearings. You can see the the towel, the discoloration as I move the bearings back and forth as that that grease comes off and we get back to clean. All right. Yeah, that's much more like it. Okay. So I think we are clean. So I'm gonna start with building it from this scale. I'm oh, sorry. We're gonna get one more pass on that guy. Okay, so we start building it back from this scale. Let's see if I can remember how this went. I'm going to take the pivot, push it through. Next, I'm going to get a ball bearing on, and I'm going to use a good lubrication that doesn't turn into an eco-disaster in your knife. This is KPL. I'm just going to put a little bit in each, in this ball bearing. And it's just like a children's toy. We're just stacking it on and then stack the next layer on. And yeah, so we're gonna put a little bit of our lubrication. You don't need much, just a little bit for it to run on. Put that guy down. Okay. I'm just gonna put a little bit more in there and a little bit more. I always like to put the open side of these bearings toward the blade. I don't know if it matters, but it allows me to actually trap a little bit of grease in this channel with the ball bearings so that they do, do their job better in theory. All right. Now this guy. And so this is our detent ball. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on, in the detent ball and then kind of move it around the detent ball track. And then the stop pin is going to go right there. And this goes across the thing. And our barrel spacer needs to line up with this hole. And so I think we got all the holes lined up. Sorry, I'm working closer to me and not where you can see it on camera. Um, and then we're going to put the pivot back in. I need my D10, T10. That'll hold it together while I get the clip in. So switching around and get our T6 back out. And I'm glad I left this the way it was. That way I don't have to guess which which hole each screw goes in. And I don't tighten them both down equally or fully until I get them both in. And then I make sure each one is tight. All right. So just eyeballing it it's a little off center but we can play with that I don't know with this knife I'm ever going to get perfectly centered but that's not too bad um, it's a little tight back it off just a hair when you're doing these micro adjustments you don't need to do much just back it off a hair quarter like an eighth of a turn if that yeah that's, that's much better and so I don't have any blade play in any direction which is nice it flicks pretty easy and the oh yeah the action is much better now that I've serviced it cool so this has been the uh, unboxing and first impressions and uh, impromptu disassembly and maintenance of the Kubi 321. Uh, cool little knife. Like it. Um, I'm not sure if it'll stay in the collection. It may uh, hang around. But uh, it's got some neat things you don't see on budget knives. So if you're a knife enthusiast and budget is really where your money goes, um, 
may want to give this one a check out. Like, you're not going to get many front flippers and fuller flickers in this, uh, this price range. So, cool little knife. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate a like and subscribe. Y'all have a great weekend.